Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I am really happy to have you here with us today and I would like to welcome all of the new faces to the channel over the last couple of days. I am very happy and super grateful to have you here with us. Today we are going to be making a whole bunch of delicious food in the kitchen and a lot of this food is actually coming out of my food storage which I thought would be helpful for those of you that are wondering how to actually cook with all the food that you saw on my pantry tour over the weekend. We're going to be making a spaghetti sauce and this is actually my mom's recipe and it is the best spaghetti sauce ever. We're going to make some homemade French bread and this is a recipe that I have tried over the last couple of days and it is also really, really good. And my kids want to make some maple candy with all of the snow that we have outside today. The snow is absolutely crazy. We got another four inches overnight. So we'll take a walk outside and I'll show you the winter wonderland that we're currently living in. Before we get into actually doing all the prep work, I need to get the wood cook stove lit and go down to the pantry and get all the ingredients that we need. We are getting so much snow right now and for the very first time in my memory we're getting a lot of wind from the south so it's filling my wood box with snow and that's never happened before so I guess we're gonna have to put a lid on our wood box. Look at it over there. <laughs> This is crazy. It's like a blizzard. Oh, this is Martha. This is my cook stove. She has a name because I think she deserves one. <laughs> and um, it's an Elmira Oval wood cook stove. We think it's 1984, might be 1986. I love old antique stoves. They're absolutely beautiful, but they aren't CSA approved, which means that the clearances on the back between the stove itself and any combustible surfaces are massive. So this stove would have had to have been way out in the middle of the room here. And because it's CSA approved, we only had to leave a certain amount of clearance on the back. And then also, I'll show you back here, but there's, there's heat shields that you can buy for the back of them that decrease your clearances even more. So this is fantastic because I love the way this is positioned in the room. 16 years ago, Dan and I leased a farm to just kind of try out the lifestyle and there was a cook stove there and ever since cooking on that stove, I have always wanted to have a uh, wood cook stove again. So I'm really, really happy that we found this. It's beautiful and it cooks so well. I just love it. I can hear the fire going now. It's starting to take off. So we are going to actually cook our entire meal today on the wood cook stove. Now we will head down to the pantry and get all of our groceries that we need for making all this food. Okay, my little grocery shopping basket. So what do we need here? We need some whole tomatoes and some tomato sauce. We also need tomato paste. What else did we need? I'm trying to remember here what we needed. I should have brought my list. <laughs> I need a grocery list to shop in the pantry. Um, I think we needed tomato paste, onions, and garlic. Okay, we need four of these yellow onions. And when I was checking my onions yesterday, whenever you're keeping food in storage, you really want to be checking it at least once a week minimum and just kind of feeling and making sure nothing feels soft. All these ones feel good. But when I was feeling the ones on the bottom here, this one was feeling a little soft. So oh, <laughs> I had to pull really hard. So I'm just going to take this one and use that one up. We also need some garlic. And these ones, what was this variety again? These ones were, these ones were Armenian garlic. The flavor is really nice on these, um, but the bulbs were small in comparison to the uh, purple Russian ones that I was using. I also need to open up a new tomato paste. Tomato paste is something that I don't make just because it is very, very time consuming. So I should have put that in my basket first. Okay, and I think that was every, oh no, we did need to grab a squash from the other room too. So we'll go grab a squash. I know squash seems like kind of a weird ingredient for spaghetti sauce, but trust me, it is delicious. I am going to use a Burgess Buttercup. It's such a beautiful squash. I'll show you upstairs where we have a little bit more light. 
Now that we have all of our groceries, we can get into putting this recipe together. Okay, we're gonna need our cutting board and a knife. And we are also going to need goggles since we're chopping onions. And this is my preferred method to not have burning eyes. And I wanted to show you these absolutely awesome goggles that one of you wonderful humans sent me in the mail. There wasn't a name or anything on it, so I, I wish I could personally thank you, but thank you so much. These absolutely made my day. They're fantastic. I think they're a step up from the shark ones that I was wearing before. So we're gonna wear those when we're chopping our onions. But the first thing that I need to do is to get this squash roasting in the oven. A squash roasting usually takes about an hour or so. And for roasting squash, I like to use parchment paper because then the um, tray is not impossible to clean. I'm going to enlist a little bit of help to cut this squash in half because they are kind of hard to cut. Look at the color of that squash. So this is Burgess Buttercup, one of my favorite squashes. It is absolutely delicious. So I'm just gonna scoop out the seeds and I'm actually going to send these seeds out to my chickens. When it is really cold outside, uh, one of the ways that you can help your animals stay warm is to give them just a little bit of extra in the way of feed because the digestion process actually helps your body stay warm. So I will send these out to them and they'll be very happy. So all I'm gonna do is scrape these out, put them flat side down on my tray and then pop them in the cook stove. And they can roast in there. One of the challenges in, of baking in a wood cook stove is that there's more heat on one side. So you often have to rotate whatever it is that you're cooking in there, particularly if it is like bread or cookies, like a baked good, so that you don't end up overcooking one side and undercooking the other side. It's not as big of a deal with the squash that I'm doing right now, but would be with bread. Put all these seeds in there. Take those out to the chickens. Okay, now we need to open up our tin of tomato paste. And whenever I am taking things like tins out of my pantry, before I put the can opener on it, I always wash the top just because dust starts building and then you put the can opener into it and it kind of pushes the top down into the jar. And it's a little bit gross. So what I do with this is I'll open it up, I'll use what I need and I'll use the rest of it um, or I'll put the rest of it in Ziploc bags and then pop it in the freezer. Just enlisted some help to open up that tin. So I was killing my wrist. So we're just putting a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of this because my beef is super, super lean and it um, needs a little bit of added fat in it. So I've just had this defrosting in a sink of warm water this morning. Actually remembered to do that, which is nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> Normally I'm cooking frozen meat. Okay, this is gonna head over to the cook stove to start frying up. And cook stoves have hot spots. Of course, the fire is over on this side, so this spot right up here tends to be the hottest. And then the further you move this way, of course, the cooler it gets. So you just kind of get used to it, and each cook stove I've found is different. So um, you just kind of get used to how your, your stove works. But the perfect sweet spot for frying up food is right here. I'm just gonna set this to the side because I don't need it quite yet. What I do need is to get all of my onions and my garlic chopped up. We're getting more snow. It is snowing again. Uh, we'll go outside in a little bit because we have to do some plowing on the driveway. And I'll show you how much snow we actually have. It is just crazy. Okay, three cloves of garlic. <sighs> Yes, honey. 
Okay, we're gonna get our garlic chopped up here. Push that to the side and then chop up our onions. And before we do that, we need to get our fancy goggles on. What do you think? I think they're pretty awesome. Absolutely made my day when I opened up that package. Oh, it's the best. When I was mentioning that my onions were a lot hot, hotter than they have been in years past, one of you suggested that perhaps it was from the drought that we had later on in the summer this year. And I think that, that I mean, that makes sense to me. So I'm sure that's probably what it was. But either way, they are hot. One of these days, I would like to do a test on all of the different suggestions that have been made to me over the last couple of weeks on ways to be able to chop onions without your eyes burning. I'm just gonna cut off these bad parts of this one that was going soft down there. And then get these all chopped up. You can imagine it is very hard to take me seriously with these goggles on, isn't it? <laughs> They're so awesome. I love it. Okay, so now let's go and check on our fire and see if we have to add some wood. You can see down there, it's still nice and hot, but definitely some more wood. While that ground beef is frying up, before I add all the onions and the rest of the ingredients, we will get the bread going. Because the French bread that we're going to make does require a couple of hours of rising time, I'm just gonna get that going right now too. And so we're gonna add two cups of warm water, a tablespoon of yeast, I do the same thing with my yeast as I do for all my other bulk stuff. I buy my uh, yeast in bulk packages. I keep it in the freezer and then I just refill this glass jar and keep it in the refrigerator. And then as it empties, I just fill it up when it needs to be. Two and a half teaspoons of white sugar. You could also use honey in this as well if you'd like and five cups of flour. And what we're gonna do is add the flour, two cups initially, and then one cup at a time after that. And I'm just using bread flour here. So two cups. And to this, I'm going to add two and a little bit teaspoons of salt. You want to knead until it starts to pull away from the sides, but this bread is a soft one, so it's still gonna be quite sticky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of a bowl, and this is what I will rise this bread into. And when you do that, it's kind of sloshing around a little so all the sides are covered and that just prevents sticking. And I always use a dampened tea towel. I'm just setting this on the top of my cook stove to rise. It's nice and warm up here. I wouldn't put it over on this side though because that would be too hot. And our ground beef is just about ready to add our other ingredients. And into this, we're going to add our garlic and our onions. Normally, if I'm going to be frying up onions and garlic first in a recipe, I'll do the onions first and then the garlic's ne garlic next, just because garlic cooks so much faster and tends to burn more quickly than onions do. But because this is just being mixed into all of this ground beef, I'm not worrying about that as much. So next, we're going to add our tomato paste. That looks like about a tin's worth. <laughs> Need two tins worth of tomato paste. Just going to pull this off the heat a little bit. So it's really hot now. I'm 
we're going to be adding oregano and basil, a little bit of parsley, and one of my mama's secret ingredients, and that's cloves, so just an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, so just a little, just a little shake, pinch of pepper, and I like to add salt towards the end of the cooking time. A pinch of red pepper flakes and then mix this all up and let this cook up until it starts being fragrant. That's the word my mom uses. Once you can start smelling all those herbs cooking, then you can add in the rest of your ingredients. Oh my gosh, it's already smelling so good. Okay, we're going to add some celery. So this is just frozen celery from my garden this summer. Give that a stir in. Oh my gosh, does that ever smell amazing. Just gonna check on our squash here. Oh, it is cooking up nicely. It's going to be done very soon. A tablespoon of sugar to cut the acidity of the tomatoes. The nice thing about peppers, I think I'll put mm, about that much in there. Um, the nice thing about peppers is they don't need to be blanched um, before you freeze them. You can just chop them up and then cook them up just as you would if they were fresh. I use them in all kinds of stuff, basically anything I would use fresh in, except for maybe like a salad or something like that. My gosh, that smells amazing. I'm just adding the chopped plain tomatoes a quart of tomato sauce and this has a little bit of seasoning and um, what else did I put in here some onion and some garlic in my opinion you can never have too much onion or garlic oh my goodness this just looks crazy delicious this sauce needs to cook for a couple of hours to develop all of the flavors and as you can see it's super thick already so I'm actually gonna add some more sauce to it Now I am about to show you the most brilliant trick that my mom does for this sauce so that you don't get sauce spattering all over your stove while it's cooking down. And that is cover it with tin foil and then so that your steam can escape and your sauce can thicken, a little hole in the top. And that way the steam can come out, but you don't end up with spatters all over your stove. Okay, now we are going to get all of our tomato paste put into some Ziploc bags. And I just use the snack bags for these. I don't get fancy with the really thick ones. You could also use reusable um, little containers, which is something I would actually like to get just so that I don't have the waste of these. So then you just put in however much you normally use. So I put one tin's worth in here, give or take a little bit. Like so, and then I'll throw those in the freezer. So I had a, quite a few questions about our mayonnaise and our ketchup, the bulk stuff down in the pantry. So what we do is we have these, you can get these at Costco or any kind of bulk grocery store, and we fill these, and each one of these number 10 cans fills four of these, and that's actually how many we use in a month. So we just fill those up once a month, and then we have our ketchup and our mayonnaise ready for the month. And then our extra um, bottles that we have just go into our spare fridge downstairs until we need them. Okay, we are going to make our maple snow candy. So we have some snow in here. Of course, make sure your snow is super clean. And we need a pot to put our maple syrup in. And then all we're going to do is boil this to be about 240 degrees um, Fahrenheit on a candy thermometer. 
super, super easy. And then all we're gonna do is swirl it on the snow. We don't do this very often because maple syrup right now is so expensive, but it is a tradition. So it needs to be done at least a couple times. There's our gorgeous maple syrup. And I think just because I'm gonna have better control on the temperature, we'll just do this on the stove here. This is what a candy thermometer looks like. And this one's really nice because it actually has firm ball, soft crack, hard crack, hard ball and soft ball um, temperature gauges on it. So depending on how crunchy you want your candy would be how high you're going to heat your syrup. So we'll go over here. You could use shaved ice if you don't live somewhere that has snow. We wanna pack this down pretty well. Where are we at here? We're almost to temperature here, just about. So this is very, very, very hot. So be really careful when you're doing this. So let's see, let's do some swirls. Some long ones. Have I very tall on you? Do some letters. How about that? Do a T next. Okay. T next. It's time to do a <laughs> to do a Q. J. I think we might need some more um, snow, guys. Really? Yeah. Right on the yeah. deck. That'd be fun, hey? That would be awesome. And then we can all just go outside and go up. Oh. Yep, you guys can just go eat it right out of the snow. Okay, let's do that before this gets too hard. Okay. Swirls. Yeah, these are huge. <laughs> you can do them much bigger on here, eh? Yeah. Make a really long one. A long one? Really long. Oh, it's cold out here. Oh. That's why I grab this stuff. You're smart. Okay, last one. Oh, it's even <laughs> okay, the fun part about this is this is pretty much ready instantly. See? That's so fun. You guys can all grab one if you like. I want really long. I'm going to get the French bread formed, the loaves formed now. And then while those are rising, because they need another hour of rising time, we will go outside. And this is especially for those of you that live in places where you don't get to experience snow. And I'll show you what is happening out there with this crazy snow. So there's our dough. So it's been rising for an hour. So now we'll pull this out and cut it in half. And what I found when I made these loaves last time is that they looked really small when I put them on, but they rise a lot. So don't be disheartened if you go to do this part and they look teeny tiny. So we're just gonna roll them out a little bit. And then roll them up. And pinch the ends. And then just pinch the bottom. Okay, so we'll put our loaf on our pan. 
and give it quite a bit of space. Like I said, it rises more than you would think. You should cut LMR into the top of one of them. Of one of the loaves? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna roll this up. Tuck our bottom in, make sure that it's all, roll it over, pinch it together. Roll our ends over and pinch those. Put it on our pan. And what I'm gonna do with these is cover them again and put them back on the top of the cook stove. To rise for another hour. I just checked the squash and it is done. So we're actually going to be adding this squash right into our sauce. So you can see the squash is all nicely cooked. So I'm just going to scoop out that nice soft squash and put it right into our sauce. And this is another one of the secret ingredients, added nutrients and a creaminess. And my mom says a depth of flavor. That's the language she uses to describe this. So I'm going to eat, I think this other half for lunch because it is so good. Butter and salt and pepper. And that is all you need for this. And this will also go out to the chickens. My squash is super smooth, so I'm not pureeing it, but if yours isn't, run it through um, your blender or your food processor first before adding it to your soup. Doesn't that, or your, sorry, your sauce. Doesn't that look amazing? Mm -mm -mm. Dan has already been down this way with the plow, so we'll wait till he comes back up and jump in with him. And in the meantime, I am going to get this all shoveled. And I just checked the temperature and it's minus 10 degrees Celsius, which I think is around 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It's tempting to leave shoveling until it's actually stopped snowing. But the risk of doing that is that it just becomes too much to deal with. The nice thing about this snow is that it's nice and light and fluffy. It's not too wet. I have such a hard time getting enough exercise in the winter time. So I really try to take advantage of being able to get outside and even just go for a brisk walk or do some shoveling just see my heart beating a little bit. Well, hello there, handsome. How are you? Can I catch a ride? This old plow truck, I've mentioned this in past videos, but because we have so many new faces here, I'll explain it. Um, Dan bought four completely broken down dump trucks for really, really cheap, and then he built one out of them. And this has absolutely revolutionized our plowing because we used to do it with two tractors, like just open tractors. Very, very cold to um, plow two kilometers with. The driveway looks so great. Are you gonna come in and have lunch? It's just about noon. Yeah, I have to work out. Okay, so I'm just gonna run up and grab all those treats for the chickens, and then I'll probably have to go in and get the bread into the oven. This is our sledding hill up here. And interestingly enough, last year, the kids didn't really sled much, but this year, the minute the snow hit the ground, they were out sledding. We string um, Christmas lights up this hill so that they can sled at night. It's so magical looking. All the snow blew in on the porch, which is really weird. That usually doesn't happen. Let's just double check this temperature here. Minus 10 degrees, which is, what is that, 15? degrees Fahrenheit. Looks about right. Okay, we'll bring down the chicken treats. I have a little bit of leftover spaghetti. That's a couple days old, so I'm gonna give that to them too. Thank you. 
when we went by with the plow it covered up the area that I had just shoveled <laughs> so Dan's shoveling it back out for me minus 10 is the perfect winter temperature because it's cold enough that it's not slushy and mucky and the snow isn't super heavy to move and it's warm enough to actually be able to be outside and enjoy yourself my chickens have an undercover run for the winter time so they have a big run for the summer but chickens do not like snow at all so the undercover run that we have on our chicken coop is awesome and I can't take credit for it because our coop was built back in around the 1930s or so and they were smart back then and they built things to last and they built things to handle the cold it was much colder here back then than it is now oh man the snow's blown in here too come on guys chickens chick, chick. what do you think pretty lady is that good come on out here i've got a treat for you hi everybody you guys want to come out and have this treat before your sister eats it all up come on out you go good girl this chicken coop's built out of log so it stays nice and toasty in here we have some ventilation up in the top ventilation super important for chickens because it's actually humidity that can cause the biggest issue um, rather than the cold like a lot of our other buildings this is chinked with mud and we have actually gone in and insulated a lot of the cracks here you can see anywhere that the chinking has started to fall out we have insulated it with hay got the egg in there we do have two ducks and these ducks are purely for our pleasure we just love having them they waddle around they free range during the summertime and they're just so lovely I normally wouldn't recommend having ducks in with chickens because ducks are notoriously messy they splash water everywhere but having just two in a coop this big is fine and they actually live out on the rest of the farm during the summertime okay oh it's so beautiful out here right now you can kind of see the sun I don't know if you can see that oh yeah the sun sort of peeking through the clouds up there which is just making this beautiful light out here okay back up to the house to get that french bread in the oven whoa awesome feels like a hot chocolate kind of day too doesn't it when i came in the house earlier all of a sudden every single person in my family was ravenously hungry so we heated up some leftovers for lunch and we had white chicken chili that was a recommendation from you guys to use with that canned chicken that i had down in the pantry we were calling it ugly chicken so now we're calling everything that we're using that chicken in it's prefaced with ugly chicken so it was ugly chicken white chili that we had for dinner and it was actually pretty good and then we also made some buffalo chicken with it as well and both were i wouldn't say they were delicious. The recipes themselves were good, but with that kind of stringy canned chicken, um, they weren't awesome, but it was definitely edible, which is great because I have at least 10 jars of that chicken left to use. So thank you very much for those suggestions. Now we have our spaghetti sauce is all done and it smells incredible it smells like my childhood we ate one of the loaves of the french bread with lunch but we have one left that we will have with supper now we have some spaghetti that we're going to scoop up with some of this amazing sauce and try it oh it smells so good and of course we need a piece of french bread with that because nothing is as good in my mind as any type of pasta with french bread i will often make garlic toast so all i do is i put garlic butter on the bread cut open like this and then sprinkle some parmesan cheese on it and broil it in the oven it is delicious i could honestly just eat this bread just with the sauce and just skip the pasta altogether. so good my kids are going to be quite happy when they get home and they get to have some spaghetti it's everyone's favorite especially my youngest she would eat spaghetti three times a day if i let her i hope you enjoyed today's video everyone i hope you have a fantastic day and i'll see you again next time
Bye.